Hi everybody, I'm Lori Ellison from Hudson Valley Bookkeeping. Today I'm going to show you how to set up your tenant security deposit in QuickBooks Online. Please be sure to like and subscribe to our channel. If there's something you would like me to make a video about, specifically about QuickBooks Online or Landlord Bookkeeping, please put it in the comments below and I will try and get a video going on that. All right, let's get started. Okay, let's look at setting up a tenant deposit in QuickBooks Online. The first thing you'll need to do, pretty much the first thing you need to do anytime you're doing something new is probably set up an additional account in your turn of accounts. So if you're holding a security deposit for a tenant, that's a liability. Okay, so we have to set up a new liability. Make it current. You know what, we had some, what I would say is name it. Okay, Bob Jones. All right, let me just back up a little. You really want to individualize these in your tenant security account. So first we'll make a parent called tenant security, and then we'll make two sub accounts, Bob Jones, Sue Smith. Let's write that down because I have had it where I go into someone's books I've never worked in before and someone long ago set these up, especially in commercial accounts because those are usually long-term leases. And everybody just posted everything to the parent account. It's really hard to look up and find the number really quickly if it's a huge amount and there's not good notes. So we just set up did I just set up tenant security account? Maybe I, oh, I stopped. Okay. First, do your other current liability. This will be the parent, like overall. Let's say you needed to give a financial to the bank. You don't need them to know every person's individual. You could say payable, just keep it like that. Okay, so then we have new. If you're gonna make a parent with subs, the detail type always needs to match, okay? All right, so we have Bob Jones. You can put the unit number, I already forgot. Now you're not gonna pick Bob Jones because he's a sub. You're gonna pick the parent and you'll do Sue Smith. Okay. So now you'll see Bob Jones, Sue Smith. So the only way you would post against these should be you get money from them. So let's say today, oops, I was doing a different video there. Let's say Bob, he's not in here. Okay, look, Bob Jones, it's warning you if you're paying against that, but we're not, we're going into the balance sheet. We're not posting against an invoice where Bob owes. And let's say it's $1,200. I have no idea what his rent was or what building he's in right now. So then you'll just say security deposit or Jones. Copy it into the memo. This is a really good place to put a copy of Bob's check. Okay. I don't know how many times in since I've been a bookkeeper that people have like argue over how much they gave you for security. And it's really hard to prove things that didn't happen. But if and it's 10 years from now, if you can just go back, pull this transaction and say, well, here's a scan of your check. Can you prove you paid more? Um, I know that sounds really strange, but it really does happen. 
Okay, and let's say on the same day, Sue Smith, right, Sue Smith? Why it's um, doing that, and a good thing to pay attention now, I'm ignoring it, but it's warning you to not double enter, like post against rental income when you had an invoice where Sue owed on, but we didn't make her, we're just saying that she just gave the money straight. We didn't invoice for it. Let's say $1,200. And then you transfer specific. And here, look, I actually have in her name when she's going to expire and her unit number, so might as well. And then anything in your description, you should always copy to your memo, unless like you're doing bank feed stuff. And then you, I would recommend putting a copy of her check or let's say she ACH'd or wired you the money. You usually would say it in the, um, on the bank, your bank statement, or like when you go on bank activity, it shows the small amount, you know, like that her name was the person giving you the money. And I'll just use this to teach you. Let's say instead of this being a bank amortization schedule, it's your bank activity. And right here it says the date, Sue Smith, and that, you know, and maybe she put in there the Y or something. What you could do is just snip it. Right? Because you don't want to scan your bank statement into there. You're just trying to prove what Sue did. So you could do that and you'd save it and then attach it. That's another thing if they don't have a real check. Okay. Okay, so I want anybody using QuickBooks to get really, really unafraid of a balance sheet. It should not be scary. And anytime, like here's a problem. This is probably something I was teaching on not what you shouldn't have. Okay. Um, there's all kinds of stuff that I would say you shouldn't have on this right now. But what we're looking at, oh, wrong date. So here you go, tenant security deposit, 1200 for Bob Jones, 1200 for Sue Smith. Now you could always bring it up so you know your total 2400. This should also go into a bank account that's not your operating. So um, keep that in mind. I didn't make a new bank account for this demo file, but you shouldn't be, this is your liability and you shouldn't be keeping this in your operating funds. So let's say now it's a year later, and Bob's moving out. You would go and write a check, and let's say he was a good tenant. This is where you would go security, Bob Jones, full fund of security deposit, right? 1200. Okay. So now you'd have to go 1231.21. Bob is zero. We can make him an inactive. And let's say Sue. We have 1200. But let's say Sue is moving out too, but we're charging her $200 because she left holes in the wall or, you know, just something. Okay. So what are you gonna do about that? Let's say we give her a thousand back. So we're gonna write a check one year from now to Sue Smith. Let's say partial refund of deposit. Okay, so now we have $200, right? So what I say in a lot of my videos and I really believe is I really don't want amateurs using 
the journal entry. Okay, I don't even like new bookkeepers using journal entry because it's confusing and most of the times people go the wrong way. They use the wrong debit, the wrong credit. And we don't even need to use a journal entry because we can track things easily in QuickBooks and I believe in transactions. Okay. So here is Sue's register. So here came in the money deposited from Sue when she rented the apartment. Then a year later, we gave her $1,000 back, but we held back $200. So right now with the 200 sitting here, it's like you still owe Sue $200, but you don't. So what you're gonna do so you can only here, you can only, it says journal entry, but it's not the same as the one I showed you before where you did, let me just make a second tab. Just copying and pasting. This way I don't lose my, my place here. And you can do this and then jump around. Just make sure you use the refresh button. Okay, so what accountants and bookkeepers like to use is this. But I'm assuming if you're watching this video that you're probably a landlord or a bookkeeper working for a landlord and you need help, right? So let's not make it harder than it has to be. This isn't extremely hard. It's just bookkeeping is mostly very detailed and tedious, right? So we need to be concerned about the $200 here. So we're gonna add a journal entry because we need to get this down to zero. We don't owe Sue $200. So 12, 13, 20, 21. What happens with security deposits that you're using for um, repairs and maintenance is it actually has to be moved to your rental income. Um, portion of And I'll explain that a little more because I can see, so we're gonna say decrease. And I probably made, Sue was in which apartment? I can't remember. Let's pretend she's in two. Oh, that's gonna drive me crazy, hold on. I should write this stuff down before I start. Sue's in apartment two. Okay. So we're really going to increase our, wait, this is utilities. I need rental income. Apartment two. Okay. So we have zero dollars owed to Sue. The 200 had to post against rental income to take it off of the liability. And then what would happen is you have this extra rental income because it's no longer, it wasn't like money that they gave you and then money that you gave to them. But then what would happen? Let's say you had to pay a handy person to come fix that, then it's going to re reduce it because you're withholding how much security, you know, let's say two days later. I mean, it's never perfect, but the point is that's how you close out security. Okay, so I hope you found this helpful. I showed you an easy, clean way where someone pays the money and then you pay them back the exact same amount. And I also showed you how someone pays you the money and you only give them a partial refund, what you do with the balance. The other things to really pay attention to are make sure that you make the sub accounts. So. These are done, and then you could go into QuickBooks, let's say it's a year later, really, and you would make it inactive. So they don't show up when, you know, because you could have in a, a small multifamily, I mean, every year or two it could change. So you're going to have all of these that they're not there. So that's all you do, just take it down. Um, I hope you found this helpful. Have a great day.